Abilene's Rock Station, Rock 108 online at KEYJ.com. I'm the pain man, and uh, now joined on the phone by Josh Todd from Buck Cherry. How the hell are you doing this morning, Josh? Hey, man. Um, I'm great. You know, we're currently at home working on a new record, and, and uh, you know, we, we put out an EP last year. It's yeah. The EP, and it's just been, it's been going great. We have our own record label now, FM Records, and, and things are going smooth. We're about uh, really close to finishing this thing in the next, I would say, three weeks, and then we're going to start hitting the road pretty hard uh, in the March. Man, that's fantastic. Now, uh, you know, we've got you guys coming to town as uh, one of our co-headliners for the Rock 108 Birthday Bash on April 21st at the Taylor County Coliseum. Uh, just an awesome lineup of bands. But, uh, you know, that's, uh, you know, we're a couple months down the road from that. Between now and then, you know, what's, uh, you, you, you mentioned off mic that you guys are going to be going to Japan. What's, uh, <laughs> that's got to be pretty cool, man, to be able to travel the world and uh, see all these cool places, huh? Yeah, we got offered to play at the Budokan uh, in Tokyo, wow. uh, which is a really well-known place uh, with a really famous Japanese band called The Vamps. So uh, we're going to go do that and have some fun, get in front of a lot of people, and and we're just going there for one show, and then we're turning around and coming back. We were just there, like, uh, I want to say three months ago, and so or two months ago, so it's going to be great. They're, they're really uh, the Japanese are very loyal fans. They love rock and roll. Yeah. They love Buck Cherry. You know, it's it, uh, you guys. Uh, you guys. I've seen. I've seen. Uh, you know, kind of. To me, I've been a huge fan since day one and everything, and I've seen kind of a, a rebirth of energy. Just kind of, it's almost like you guys found the fountain of youth. It, uh, you, you, I mean, when you're on stage, to me, you know, it looks like. I mean, the past few years, it looks like you guys are up there for the first time, not in uh, in an immature type of aspect, but in the uh, excitement. You know, like this is, you know, you guys. It looks like to me that you uh, you're probably enjoying what you're doing more than you ever have. You know, we we really love what we do, and. Um it, it means a lot to us. You know, that stage time is really important. We want to make sure we give people their money's worth. And, you know, when it's fun for us, it just makes everything work better, you know. And yeah. uh, it's the best time to be in Buck Cherry right now, really, um, because we are in control of every aspect of what goes on with us. And that's when we really uh, work and shine the best. You know, that's the way it's always been over the years. And we've been on every record label you can think of. And, <laughs> and so, I mean... I mean, this is the way it works the best for us. Now, when you uh, when you first uh, started off and everything, because every every kid that picks up a guitar, or drumsticks, or a microphone, they dream of that uh, big record deal. And like you said, you had you guys have been on pretty much every record label there is now, and now you control your own destiny in every aspect of uh, of the game. So, with that being said, what kind of advice would you give some of the uh, up and coming bands these days? I would really, uh, you know, it's hard because when you first start out and you're young and you're, you're reckless and you just, all you want to do is, is be an artist. And that means, you know, you just want to, you just want to play live and yeah. enjoy the after show, uh, you know, festivities, <laughs> which are a lot of things and, and just have a good time and, and just live the dream. But you got to understand that your band is a, is a business and it's a, it's a, it's a product and you're a product and that you have to kind of pay attention to that. And, you know, I'm only saying this because we did everything the wrong way at the beginning, which a lot of bands do, you know. And, yeah. and a, a major a record deal is really, all, all that is is a bank. You know, they're, mm -hmm. they're already established. They give you money to establish your brand, and then they take something from you. And it's like you have to be very careful about who you get into bed with. Yeah. Um, and that's it. You know, my advice would be be careful once the record deal comes. And a lot of mistakes that bands make is when they get a record deal, they feel like they've arrived, and that's really when the work begins. Right. So you got to – it's a lot of work. You know, you got to really work hard. Now, let's talk about uh, your your last EP that came out, uh, you know, came out last year. Uh, you know, that four-letter F word, we love to say on the radio, but we can't. So <laughs> uh, right. would that be kind of an homage to uh, the previous uh, relationships you've had in the record industry? Not at all. You know, the F word has so many different meanings. 
and we've always wanted to put out an EP. Yeah. And we're always thinking about we're we're always thinking about doing you know figuring out really cool things for our fans. And you know, we've made six records up to this point, so we're like we we really want to do this EP. And now, and now we got this idea where we want to do three of them at some point. You know, wow, we want to cool. do like e, EP record EP and then, and then you know catalog it as like a, a little box set, the EP sets because we're gonna have themes for each one but oh, cool. uh, you know uh it was just we're like we we had just started our new record label we wanted to put out a record label nightmare and that's the <laughs> fvp and uh and we teamed up with best buy and carolina they've been great partners with us and <laughs> and we put out this ep where people thought we weren't going to be able to sell it and we've already got thirty seven thousand copies out there and it's uh it's it's going really really well. I love it. I, I love it. I, I think that uh, you guys are really uh, you, you're you're kind of standing up for uh, the voiceless in the industry because uh, you're doing what everybody wants to do but most can't. So uh, you know, kudos to you on that for sure. And I gotta you know it uh, you, you know whether we can you know play the f word on the radio or not, it, it doesn't matter because it's fantastic stuff. And as far as the radio is concerned, we got radio edits and and I you know uh, you know mad applause to you guys for putting that out. I thought it was cool. Really cool, Josh. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, you know, we, we knew the radio song, Say F It, was going to work, yeah. you know, on the radio. We would just do an edit, and we already learned out with Lit Up and Crazy Bitch. Yeah. It's not like a new, it's not like a new thing for us. So, yeah. Um, you know, this is where the record, this is where the record business is going, and especially for rock, rock music. And, and uh, I think it's exciting, you know, this is like, you know, all the records I grew up on, when I was a kid, I grew up in Orange County, California, and they were all independent records. So, I mean, I didn't even listen to a major label record until I was in my teens, you know, as far as, like, rock, a uh, major label rock record. Yeah, yeah. You know, it was all, it was all independent records, and, and I loved them because, <clears throat> because of their honesty. You know, they, they weren't, they didn't have any rules. They didn't have a big uh, major label, you know, looking over their shoulders, right. telling them what they can and can't put out, you know. So that's what's cool about it. That's badass. Now, tell us about uh, tell us about your latest venture on the high seas. Uh, you guys, uh, you guys just got done with uh, uh, Ship Rock. Uh, how, how did that yeah. go? Yeah, that was a lot of fun. You know, it was the second time we'd done it, and um, there was a lot of there was a lot of great bands. You know, there was Seven Dust and uh, Limp Bizkit and a, a band called Crowbot, which is a good rock band. Yeah, and, and you know, and several others, and uh, Black Label Society, and so we we. Uh, we had a great time. Um, we did two shows when we were out there, and and they went off really well. And um, it's a it's a crazy time, you know. Everybody, you, you know, everybody's just like twenty four seven, just partying and seeing bands, you know. So wow, it's a lot of fun if you if you love music. Now, uh, when you were a kid, I mean, obviously there there weren't there weren't events like this and everything because you know back when we were young, it was you just go to the big festivals at the stadiums or whatever. There wasn't the the ship rock, the online type of concerts and stuff. What are some of the big memories from your childhood as far as live music and uh, what was I guess that impressionable as maybe ship rock is on some people nowadays? Well, I can I can tell you just a handful of stuff before I became a professional musician. I mean, uh, the first eye-opening show for me was I saw the Ramones at a little place called Fender's Ballroom in Long Beach, California, you know, and that was like the first real show I'd ever been to. And it, it just blew my mind, you know, the slam pit and the madness and, the, you know, and, and the songs and just uh, a live band. I was just like, wow, this is intense. And that's when I, had, that's when I kind of figured out, like, my place and where I belonged, you know. And then um, I started, uh, you know, sneaking into Irvine Meadows when it announced Verizon. Yeah. But uh, there was a there's a way that we could sneak into the place so all the kids knew about it, and <laughs> we would uh, we would rush the gate, and some and, and you'd rush the gate, and some of you'd get over, and some of you get caught by the security, and they would just let you go. But uh, so we'd rush the gate, and and I saw Iron Maiden there, and I'd never seen like a big production yeah. rock show. I wasn't in the Iron Maiden at the time, and I remember just, you know, seeing Bruce Dickinson, and I was like, wow, it was just like, it was crazy. I'd never seen anything like that, and um, 
So at that point, that's when I started getting into a lot of the major label rock records. I got into like Led Zeppelin and yeah. ACDC and Aerosmith and those type of bands. That's awesome, man. That's those are great stories too. We had the same type of uh, same type of thing at uh, Texas Jam back in the day, and uh, you know that it, it was just you know just a full day festival, and uh, we did the same thing. We you know we tried to you know we we bum rushed them, and uh, <laughs> some of us got caught, some of us didn't. But uh, you know my best experience was not getting caught and getting to see Blue Oyster <laughs> Cult and Santana on the same stage, and that was cool. Oh wow! <laughs> yeah, that's a good lineup. Hell yeah! So. Uh, we're on the phone with Josh Todd from Buck Cherry. Uh, Buck Cherry coming to town on April the 21st, playing the Taylor County Coliseum for the Rock 108 Birthday Bash. Uh, Josh, I really appreciate you taking a few minutes out of your time. I know you're getting ready to head off to Japan and then, you know, prepare for uh, the stint on the road. So thank you very much for taking a few minutes to call in. And man, I can't wait to hear some of the new music on the new album coming out. Uh, any chance we'll get to hear any of that April 21st? Uh, um, maybe. Yeah, there is maybe a chance we'll be playing our first single by then. Awesome, man. That's cool. Yeah. Well, even if you don't, man, I know we're going to have a great time. I've seen you guys, uh, you know, a ton of times, and we're really in store for a treat. And Josh, thank you so much for calling in, and we're really looking forward to seeing you April 21st. Hey, thank you, man. We are, too. We'll see you soon.